Booktube, here is my December wrap up of Contemporary Romance. I got my ticket for the long way round. December was really busy, but I was able to get a book of short stories in, several novellas, and a couple of really good books that I thoroughly enjoyed. So let me tell you what they were. Three of the novellas I read were from the On Dublin Street series by Samantha Young. Two were short stories, An On Dublin Street Christmas and An On Dublin Street Halloween, which were really short stories in the sense that they probably could have been included in the book, but probably got edited out. And then also the novella Castle Hill, which is book 2.5, and I listened to that on audio. It was narrated by Paula Costello, and it was just... All three of these stories follow the main two characters from the uh, first book. So they're kind of the foundational characters, Joss and Brayden. And it's just your typical, you know, romance and drama and, you know, that kind of thing. I really liked the Christmas story and the novella Castle Hill. I gave those both four stars. But the Halloween story just, I don't know, I just didn't care for it. I only gave that one two stars. I do love this series, though, and I'm looking forward to the next book that's coming out. The other novella I read was Maybe Not by Colleen Hoover. This is a companion to Maybe Someday. I listened to it on audio. It's narrated by Jason Carpenter and it was hilarious. So many laugh out loud moments. It's just so funny. It's about Warren and Bridget. Warren is just a guy's guy and Bridget moves in and Bridget pretty much hates everybody. She hates her life. She hates her job. She hates the way people treat her, she hates her family, <laughs> she just hates everything. But she's beautiful and Warren of course is intrigued by this and decides that he is going to conquer this girl. He bumbles through this relationship with her and it's hilariously funny. I adored this story and if you've read Maybe Someday then you need to read this because it's just so good. Jason Carpenter did such a great job with the narration. I gave it five stars. I read a classic, The Gift of the Magi. I read this every Christmas because I just think it's a wonderful story. I read it in print. It's by O. Henry, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful story of two newlyweds around the turn of the 20th century, and they just don't have very much money, as newlyweds often didn't back then. And they want to buy each other a Christmas gift, and so it's the story of what they get for each other. It's just a beautiful story. and. This particular book that I have has such gorgeous illustrations that, it, you know, I pick it up every year and read it. So, of course, I gave that one five stars. I read a book of short stories called My True Love Gave to Me. This was edited by Stephanie Perkins. And, you know, I did not like Anna and the French Kiss, which was written by Stephanie Perkins. But I have to say I liked her short story, I think maybe even the best. I listened to it on audio and it was narrated by various people, which was kind of fun because it was a real mix, you know. There were stories I really liked. There was a story by Rainbow Rowell that I absolutely adored, but there were a few that I didn't like. One that I didn't think fit, uh, one I just didn't bother to read at all, and you know, other ones that I really loved. I think that the strength of this book is simply this. If you have not read one of these authors, this is a good way to get a feel for the kind of writing that they do. You know, a feel for who they are as an author and the way that they tell a story. I gave this one four stars. I would have given it three, but I kind of leaned towards the three and a half and bumped it up to four simply because the stories that I did like, I really liked. And they kind of outweighed the stories that I didn't. Five Ways to Fall by K.A. Tucker. This was narrated on audio by Elizabeth Louise and Deacon Lee. This book was a good story, but the narration was, I just didn't care for it. It's not for me. I do not like the way Elizabeth Louise narrates pretty much anything. Her characters all sound the same. Um, I'm not really wild about her voice in general. And so while her voice is suited to some of the characters that she has done, uh, not every character. And I've listened to a lot of books that of Abby Glimes that she has narrated, and the characters just all start to sound the same. She just was not a great choice for this particular story. Deacon Lee <laughs> kind of sounded like he was trying to channel his inner John Malkovich. He had that tone to his voice. I didn't like it either. And that being said, 
The fact that I didn't care for the two narrators who did this story really speaks to how strong the story is. If you have narrators that aren't doing anything for it, it's really got to stand you know, on its own, and it did. This is a great story about moving on from a relationship that you tend to look back on with a rather romantic view, thinking it was a lot more than what it was, and getting past that and moving on. And more than anything, it was about really just growing up. I really liked it. I gave it four stars. You Were Mine by Abby Glines. This is book nine in the Rosemary Beach series. This woman, this woman writes books faster than I can read them. It was narrated on audio by Elizabeth Louise and Sebastian York, who are her basic go-to standard narrators. And, I, you know, I'm to the point now where I think I'd rather read the book than listen to those same two people narrate two characters that are completely different characters but sound exactly the same. I think, you know, Abby Glines needs to do something about that because it's just starting to make those books in that series and her books in general kind of get stale. This book was really good. I had started to feel like the series was kind of just fizzling out. No. This book redeemed it for me. This was a great story about a girl who had been in love with a boy and he died. He drowned trying to save her. So she's got this guilt and she's just devastated. She's completely let her life go out of control crazy. I mean, she's such a mess from this guy having died. And she knew another guy before she met the guy that died and he just kind of vanished. So he comes back into the picture and now he's got to fix the mess he left. So it's a beautiful story and just wrenches at your heartstrings and like I say, completely redeemed the series for me. Abby, you're my fave. I gave this one four stars. And lastly, All Lined Up by Cora Carmack. This is book one in the Rusk University series. This was narrated from two points of view by Dan Bittner and Justice Bolding. Justice Bolding is, oh my gosh, born to be a narrator. She's fairly new to narrating, but boy is she good. She just brought the character of Dallas to life. She was wonderful. I, I thoroughly enjoyed her narration. And of course, Dan Bittner. I love him. He, he just, whatever character he narrates, he just brings him to life and does it so well. And this is a book about football. I read a book last year, a romance, that had a main character who was a football player, but there really wasn't any football in it. This is a book about football. I loved the way that we got so much of the game. A lot of the story elements had to do with the way that the players related to each other and the way that the players relate to the coach and the rules of the game and the way that they train and get ready for a game and what's important. And of course it's a romance. Dallas is the daughter of the coach. She has an interesting relationship with her dad. Her mother is out of the picture, has been since she was very young. So you have an interesting dynamic going on there with, you know, this daughter that feels like she comes second to football and this dad that's trying to, you know, do the best he can. And there's a new guy in town. His name is Carson and he is a walk-on. I did not know this. I had to ask my husband what this was, but a walk-on is a football player who is at a university and he has to try out for the team. He doesn't walk in with a scholarship. He hasn't been recruited from anywhere. So he has to try out for the team and when he does, if he makes it, he's got a lot to prove. It's just a delightful story. I absolutely loved it. And the best thing about it is that you've got a lot of football. So the whole thing, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So I'm really looking forward to reading the rest of the books in this series. Book two is out right now, and I think book three is probably gonna be released later this year. So yeah, gave that one the very top of four stars. And that's it for all the contemporary books I read in December. If you've read any of these books, I would love to hear your thoughts. So please let me know. And that's it for now for me. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. You're gonna miss me when I'm gone. You're gonna miss me by my walk. You're gonna miss me by my taco. You're gonna miss me when I'm gone.